today's lesson, we looked at what processes and factors influence biodiversity. Today we're going to focus on factors which influence biodiversity globally, globally regionally, locally and also anthropogenic by humans. This links into your spec in your first key question. What is the nature and value of biodiversity? And it looks at the second bullet point. There are a range of key processes and factors that influence biodiversity, such as the role of endemism, climate and human activity and actions. The first area that we're going to look at are what are the global factors to affect biodiversity. And this can be split up into size of the area, history and age, isolation and altitudinal range. So-called global fa um, primary ecological factors determine the broad framework within which other ecological factors operate. The first one is size of area. Overall, biodiversity increases with area because large continuous biomes support a wide range of species and extensive boundaries which encourages migration. Comparisons can only be made with similar ecosystems. For example, a large area of polar habitat contains far fewer species than a smaller area of rainforest or reef. The second factor is history and age. In general, biodiversity is greatest in the oldest and least disturbed ecosystems, especially in the tropics, where there are few physical constraints on productivity. Third, isolation. Geographical isolation, particularly on remote islands, reduces the number of species, but also encourages endemism, as the remaining species develop in a distinctive way, for example, in the Galapagos Islands or in Madagascar. And finally, altitudinal range. A large altitudinal range means a cross-section of different climates. The more climatic zones involved, the more diverse the habitat. The same principle applies concerning the ocean depth. Glo to add further, global physical factors such as variation in climate play a major role in controlling the presence or absence of limiting factors, such as temperature, humidity, light availability and nutrient supply. An absence of limiting factors leads to high levels of primary productivity, and the energy produced leads to high levels of biodiversity. Controversially, where limiting factors are strongly evident, such as cold temperatures, aridity, darkness, this will lead to low levels of biodiversity, such as in polar or desert regions. Another key factor, the size of an area. As the, con the larger the continuous area, the more species that can flourish in it. Hence why the recent conservation mantra, size matters, and the creation of huge national conservation areas, such as the Peace Park of Africa. The second section is what are the regional factors to affect biodiversity and this will be split up into productivity, habitat architecture and habitat heterogeneity. The first regional factor is productivity. This is probably the most significant factor. Higher temperatures and humidity levels, rich supplies of nutrients and light for photosynthesis and the lack of annual seasons all encourage high primary productivity and therefore abundant energy. For example, in rainforests and coral reefs. Controversially, factors limiting growth, such as cold and aridity, reduce the range and numbers of species. Second regional factor is habitat architecture. High primary productivity encourages the development of a complex trophic pyramid with many ecological niches. This system is capable of supporting high levels of biodiversity. And finally, habitat heterogeneity. A varied physical environment will harbour greater biodiversity because it provides a wider range of habitats for a larger variety of species. 
The next factor is local factors to affect biodiversity. And this can be divided up into succession, interaction between species, disturbance and dispersal and colonisation. Succession. Biodiversity increases as species establish themselves, interact and subtly alter the environment. This is well illustrated by the successions that occur in sand dunes or in a pond. In general, biodiversity increases over time with the immigration, establishment and development of species, leading to a creation of a succession or sequence. The second is interaction between species. This can lead to competition, which in turn may drive certain species to extinction, particularly when exotic species are introduced if you think of the red squirrel within the UK. Third, disturbance. Major environmental disasters such as fires, flooding and storms can destroy biodiversity. If you look at Australia as an example. And finally, dispersal and colonisation. Individual species, dispersal and colonisation rates have an impact on biodiversity. High rates of efficiency enhance biodiversity within an area. The final factor we are going to consider today is human factors or anthropogenic factors. The posh word we use for human within geography. Now, Undisturbed ecosystems provide a great range of ecological niches and therefore high levels of biodiversity. However, when considering human factors, it's vital that human factors are considered both as a negative, so a threat to biodiversity, but also we must consider them as a positive in terms of the spectrum of conservation strategies that can be put in place or also the fact that it's possible for people to improve degraded and damaged ecosystems and consequently restore their biodiversity. Now, biodiversity, um, human factors for biodiversity can be split up into direct drivers of change or indirect drivers of change. Direct drivers of change are things such as change in local land use and cover, the introduction of species and removals, technology adaptation and use, External inputs, such as fertiliser use, pest control, irrigation. Natural, physical and biological drivers, such as evolution, volcanoes, harvest and resource consumption and climate change. The indirect drivers of change are considered to be demographic, in terms of human population pressures, economic, globalisation, trade, market policies and framework science and technology and cultural and religious beliefs or consumption choices linked into ethical use of goods and services in different ecosystems. The process and the factors which influence biodiversity can be split up into physical and human factors on top of looking at it in terms of scale. Physical factors are climate, e.g. temperature, rainfall, amount of light, latitude, altitude, gradients, vegetation, rates of nutrients, recycle, age, size and topography of area, islandism and endemism and climate change, human factors, level of protection, management, levels of poverty, direct actions exploiting flora and fauna, clearance of agriculture leading to deforestation and the growth of human population and rates of development. Now, it's important that when you revise this topic that you look at it in terms of scale and both physical and human factors as within your exam question you could be asked either or way. Finally, in order to test your knowledge on this topic I've set you the exam question. As shown on this picture, you can clearly see the source on top of your copy and it shows you the level descriptors for each section. The question is, using figure 3, explain how physical factors influence the distribution of biodiversity shown. Now, use the level descriptors. Make sure, in order to get into that top band, that you do your extra research in order to build upon the examples that we've used in class this lesson. Hopefully this video has been useful for you and let me know if you need any more help on this topic.
Thank you, Miss Edwards. Bye.